I'm being joined tonight by a very strong uh, administrator, party administrator of the APC, and uh, a former secretary to the government of the Federation. I'm being joined by Mr. Babachi Lawal. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, sure. You. you were one of those who picked forms for Balatinubu. Yes. Who paid 100 million naira. How much of that did you contribute, though? Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you and uh, Falike were the ones who went to pick that form for Tinubu. None, none, none. I was just supposed to go. I think Bola Tinubu must have paid for it himself. Okay. We were just supposed to go and pick it for him. But, but I mean, how does it feel now, picking the form for him? And now, I mean, you look back, and you were one of those who picked that form and gave it to him. Now he's won the party ticket. How does it feel? Well, I'm elected. I'm one of those who have been on this project for more than five, six years. Really? Yes, I've, I've been. I've That's been. The, you've been pushing for Tinubu to oh, be yes. a presidential even candidate? Even while he APC. was governor, um, I've known Bola Tinubu long before he became governor, but even when he was governor, we knew that he had the capacity to rule this country, and it would be good if he were to rule this country. So from that day, we moved on. So be five, six years ago, you've been working. Much Who are more. those on your team working on this? Well, almost everybody that has been a Bola Tinubu protege has been working with us on this. Quite a number of uh, people also that have known him as his friends uh, have been working on him all these years. And it's a culmination of our efforts and prayers that, uh, and fasting and praying that has resulted in yesterday's victory. Are you a protege or a friend? To Bola Tinubu? Both. Oh, no, I'm a friend. You're not a protege? No, I'm not. You didn't, you didn't learn under him? No, no, I didn't. Uh, you, you are We're just water. friends. Where, 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 where did you cut your teeth politically? Me? Yeah. My state. I'm from Adamawa State. <laughs> no, no, I know, but I mean, there are a lot of people who say, oh, they are of uh, the Rimi, uh, they learned their political, uh, whatever, under the Rimi, they told to all under a wall. I mean, uh, uh, no, 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 nobody mentored me in politics. What happened with me was uh, uh, when uh, things were not beginning to be satisfactory for me in politics, I ran into a group of people discussing who would best be. It will salvage this whole be salvage the situation, and uh, we settled on uh, Muhammad Buhari, who was then not interested in politics, and uh, we, you know, organized a forum of discussions, nudged some influential people to convince him to contest the election. Eventually, he did, and being one of those who felt at the beginning that he should try his hand on it. It was incumbent on me to participate to help make him the president that he is today. So you were instrumental in Buhari becoming president of Nigeria? Well, yes, I could claim to be so. I mean, is it, is it a fact or, I mean... It's a fact. You... It's a fact because even at the beginning when uh, the Buhari campaign organization was formed, I was a member, I was an official in the Adama State Wing. So to that effect, and I grew up until uh, by the year 2011, I was one of the major stakeholders in that project. Uh, and you, when Bola Tinubu spoke about Buhari in, uh, in Abe Okuta, I mean, uh, it's a, I mean, that statement went viral and a lot of people were talking about, you, you voiced that and you probably had a thinking that maybe you shouldn't have said so. Yes, I did, I didn't like it. <clears throat> First of all, I repeat that I didn't like the, his claim that he was the only one instrumental to Buhari being president. I mean, when did he join the Buhari bandwagon? It was just maybe around 12, 2011, when we started talk of merger with ACN. Before then, Buhari had contested, I think, three elections. People were there who contributed their efforts, resources, physical and material in all those elections. So to a certain extent, they were the founders of the Buhari presidency. They laid the foundation for this presidency. Bola probably joined in the middle. Quite a number of people lost their lives in the several campaigns to make Buhari president. Quite a number of people sold their property to be able to contribute to Buhari being a president. So no one person can claim that uh, he was the major instrument for Buhari being president. Of course, in that, in that regard, uh, 
the importance of the roles played are be graded. He could be at the one of the top of it, but not necessarily the only one. Um, uh, when you look back, who would you say was fundamentally instrumental to Buhari coming out to politics in the first place? Can you remember anyone whom you would say, this person, if no. not for him, Buhari wouldn't have come out? No, but I know that uh, I've been sure the key uh, leaders of the first foray of Buhari into politics were Sule Hama was there, I think he was the director general of the what the Buhari campaign, the Buhari organizations, which was uh, the bedrock of uh, Buhari presidency. They, they virtually, we virtually ran the 2023 20, 20, 23 election, 2003, and so on and so forth. So Sule Haman was quite at the top of it. I know that again, by the time we didn't make it in uh, AP, AC, AP, APC, or oh, AMPP. AMPP. We formed the CPC. There again, somebody like Boba Galadima was the secretary of the party. Quite a lot of people, very many that played major roles in it. And uh, some are alive, some are not. Alive. From the CPC, the likes of Pastor Tunde Bakari is still friends with. Uh, did you ever wish that uh, someone like Tunde Bakari may have uh, succeeded uh, Balatunu? I mean, uh, Buari? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, my inclination was uh, Pastor Tunde Bakari should remain a pastor because I'm... Uh, You're a pastor yourself? Oh, yes. Oh, you were a but pastor? I am a qualified pastor. I am a theologian. But you're not a practicing pastor? No, I'm not. I'm a practicing engineer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Pastor Tunde Bakari was never in the picture to succeed in. Was there any kind of uh, well, arrangement? Well, after 2011, we... When we had major talks with the ACN, it didn't work. And at that time, you remember, Buhari had this uh, toga of being a religious bigot, and uh, we found it very difficult to convince uh, the Christian community to support him. It was uh, thought to help the issues if uh, he, were, he got somebody like Tunde Bakari to become uh, his vice president. I, frankly, I didn't know how the president came about uh, Picking Tunde Bakari, but he was picked, and we went into that election with him, and he didn't uh, contribute much to the election process because we didn't win. Mm. I mean, you had referred to, and, I, and I'll probably go. I mean, come to one or two two points about the arrangement and the formation of the APC, uh, where the promises were made, and where the promises were kept. Was there any promise that Bola Tunubu was going to succeed? Uh, let me tell you, in politics, there are various layers of uh, structures of uh, influences and organizations. And uh, you can only know at best the, your own role and the role you play in your own team. I've come to realize that quite a number of people contribute to so many things. From my own angle, by the, I, I did say in one of my write-offs that uh, after 2007, uh, when Buhari lost, going to 2011, we realized that we could not, there's no way Buhari could be president for as long as the votes only come from the North, no matter how large it is, because the constitutional requirement is that uh, apart from the simple majority, there must be a geograph geographical spread. To me, that's to say that you must get at least one quarter of the votes in at least 24 states of the Federation. The northern Nigeria is only 19 states, and that fell short with about five. So we realized that it is important to spread out to other regions. And in doing that, we looked at the regions outside the north, south, 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 east, southwest. For it to work, we needed some, a region that can come with block votes. I mean, it will not help us if we go to southeast and then we get only three states one quarter and three states, or south, south. And so we focused on the southwest. We had to have the tendency to vote block. They go where their leaders tell them to go. And that influenced our decision to reach out to the south, south, southwest. And of course, at that time, you talk politics of southwest, you are talking Bola and Tunebu, outside the PDP, 
which was uh, then uh, good luck was then in power and uh, we felt that we could challenge the PDP in the Southwest. So, and who else do we get to? There were only two people that we could reach out to, uh, Chief Bise Akande and Senator Ahmed Bola Tinubu. And so they agreed for us to start budget talks and uh, it became successful. But as to, on my own side, you know, because by then also, truthfully, I was already a long-term friend with Ashwaji Bola Tinubu. And uh, that's why I say we started this project long So there was no promise to Bola Tinubu that he was going to succeed Buhari because Bola Tinubu has said it's been his lifelong ambition to be Nigeria's president. Well, if there were any promises, it had to be between the two of them. But one thing I know, at that time, by the time we got to 2014, we were, Buhari had emerged as a presidential candidate for APC, for the then new APC. There was the need to carry the Southwest along. Because as we said, why did we go into the merger to start with so we can get Southwest votes to add to the Northern votes? And to do that, you might need to in, in, incentivize them, incentivize them. And uh, it's common knowledge that uh, Buhari, General Buhari, offered to make Bola Tinubu the vice president. And uh, in any case also, we realized that as politicians, the Southwest might be interested in getting a foot into the door. Buhari were to finish his eight years and uh, the Southwest had a vice president. It just might be easy for, for them to move up to the presidency. So the thinking, the inclination was there from the beginning? The inclination was there from the beginning that the Southwest might inherit the presidency after Buhari's North had finished. Um, but but you, you, you attributed uh, Bola Tinubu's statement in Abiy Kuta, and you tagged it an arrogant assumption. Do you still think so? I still think so. No I one, shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have said that. Did you speak with him about it? Oh, I will speak about it. <laughs> I mean, he, uh, he has read it. He, he knows about it. And uh, we laughed over it. Mm. Yeah, we uh, know each other quite well, and we laughed over it. I'm sure he understood what I was saying. But uh, as it stands right now, but, uh, Buhari tried three times. On the fourth time, he got lucky. Do you think uh, Tinubu might be lucky for the first time? His first shot at wanting to be Nigeria's president. He said it's his lifelong ambition. He has, he has assisted, he has worked and supported a lot of people. He supported Atiku Abubakar. He supported uh, um, uh, Nuhu Rebadu. Uh, he supported uh, Muhammad Buhari. This time around, it's going to be about his fourth or fifth time of getting into uh, the ring by himself the first time, fifth or fourth time by proxy. Could Tinubu be lucky for the first time? We hope he will. We can only hope and then walk towards it. Whether he makes it or not at this stage, only God knows. But we will walk towards it. And we believe that we have the instruments we have the resources, both material and intellectual, to deliver Bola Tinubu as the president. And that we... How is he perceived and received in the North? Tinubu is a very good man anywhere. He's a very kind man. And uh, you, you need to hear some of, this, some of the people he has helped out in the political lockdown, so many all over the country. He has sponsored people in Taraba, in Adamawa, in Gombe. You know, is somebody that has been helpful to almost every politician across the country. Some people, I know this. Yeah. I know this. And it's, it's public knowledge that his tentacles and his network is, uh, is as deep like the Iroko tree. Yes, down, right. down, down the, 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 the soil. Yes. Uh, but the question is whether or not you are from... Uh, Atiku Abubakar is your kinsman. It's my state. Yeah, he's from a kinsman. Maybe yeah, because you're from Adama. Yeah, that's right. You can describe him as such. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. I, I call him my elder brother. Okay. Right. So, I mean, how easy, how difficult is it for Tinobu to go head to head with an Atiku Abubakar, whom he also supported in the ACN as presidential candidate? We are there, and we are the ones in, from Adama that will deliver Bola Tinobu. In the same way, we delivered Buhari even while Atiku was contesting. 
You know, in the same way, Adam Awa delivered good luck, Jonathan, while Atiku was contesting. So it's not a new thing. We have our tentacles all over the state. It's our state. We know our own in, in tendencies, and we know how to... Bubalatunbu will win Adamawa State. But Fintiri whipped you out of uh, prominence in Adamawa. Who? Fintiri, Governor Fintiri. Let me tell you, Adamawa politics was very complex. Adamawa politics is very, very complex. By the time uh, of the 20, this last election, we were fed up with our governor. You know, these political parties have a way of producing, uh, presenting to the electorate candidates, two candidates, whether you vote or not, one of them will emerge, isn't it? That's, that's how it is. And uh, this, the, the state, as at that time, was fed up with its governor, and uh, the party at that time was fractured, and so either you don't want to vote and you let anybody to vote, but eventually, if they didn't whip us per se, yeah. and uh, we organize, we've organized ourselves, and uh, we think that... Uh, we are prepared to take it over because he has not performed well. He has not uh, behaved the manner we expected him to behave. And so he will pay him back for what he has done. We'll take a break. And when we come back, I'd like you to tell us whether or not your party is ready for a Muslim Muslim ticket. How will you solve that riddle when you get to that bridge? You are at that bridge and you need to make that decision because you need to submit your list to INEC. And that decision is staring your party in the face, especially those of you who are close to Balatinobu. But I ask that question when we return from this break. Stay with us, everyone. Our closing moment with uh, Mr. Babachi Lawa continues after this break. <laughs> so much, everyone, for staying with us. Our closing moment now with uh, former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Babachi Lawa. Um, you had said that uh, there is, the Northern Christians have been marginalized. Do you think that this is the time for that marginalization to be eradicated or to be stopped, or there should be incentivized? You view that's the, that statement today, that English. And I'm, I'm hoping that I will use it to ask questions from you. Any incentive for the Northern Christians? No, well, I'll answer this question in a roundabout way. <laughs> <laughs> a political party is in the business of winning elections. Mm -hmm. Now, and to win elections, you need to get the votes to beat your opponent. Now, the way I see it is uh, in choosing your vice president, that must be paramount in your mind. You can have the best ticket, and if you don't win the election, it's a waste of time. So whatever candidate we are going to choose, we will bear in mind that that vice president would contribute to winning that election. How does he contribute? Either because he's popular and he can bring in the votes, or he can bring in the money that will help our logistics in getting out the votes so we can win the election. But then there's also the requirement that you want to run a, divide, a, a united country. You want to run a country in which you don't have friction in the society, peaceful, settled, and everybody going about its own business. To that extent, you must factor in Nigeria's peculiarities in politics. That is why, for example, in recognition of this recognition of our own peculiarities, the northern governors and the majority of us in the north felt that the presidency ought to shift to the south. It's not a requirement in the constitution that uh, it has to shift. There's no zoning. But it's so we can have a country that is united, that uh, everybody can go about doing his own business in a peaceful environment. It could have been possible for a northern candidate to emerge, but then he will know that running the country in that manner will make the southern part of Nigeria, you know, hostile to that government. So I allowed it to shift. Now, extending that consideration to the Muslim Muslim ticket, I have, uh, I have, I live among the Christians, and I know that among the Christians, the question of Muslim Muslim ticket is a no-go area. It's dead on arrival. 
Buhari himself, even at that time, had to drop this present presidential candidate because of that tension of our Muslim-Muslim ticket. And we have not seen anything in the country that has changed, changed significantly to allow that to happen. On the contrary, it has worsened. The religious divide is, has increased, tribal divisions have increased, regional divisions have increased. So it will be a good thing if uh, APC will settle for a Muslim Christian ticket, because we know PDP, that's what they will do. That's what they will do. But it's tricky for your party, because uh, a Christian Muslim from the North might be a tough chew Why? at the election. That's a perception, and it's an age-long perception about winning election in Nigeria. You said it. Some of the facts and the realities of winning election is that ethnicity and religion, they play a major role. As sad as that may be, they are captured in the consideration for yeah. who becomes president. Yeah. You are Babacha, David Lawal. Lawal yes. For emphasis, David, David you are pastor. a pastor and you are a Christian. Yes. My guest yesterday said there is a possibility of a northeastern running mate to Bola Tinobu. Could you be the person? I'm not in the running for it. God has not told me to aspire to that position. Do, did, does God tell you everything you do? Yeah, you should be able to, if reach the level of Christianity that I do, you should be able to see God's opinion on everything you do, and you get the indication. Mm. That's, will, that's a good thing. I but, mean, for, for every, every believer, of every person of faith, you should see God's counsel. Yeah, yeah. But the, the question is, what if Paul Atinubu wants you to be his running mate? Would you accept it? I will consider it. But is this something that you think uh, is you know, good for I've, you? I've been in government before, and I have not seen any personal merit or advantage to me in being in government. Since I left government, I've had a very good life. I'm basically a business person, and I've lived well, as you can see. I, looked, I used to look uh, twice this size while I was in government, you know, obese, you know, unable to move, unable to think. But now I'm happy, my children are happy, mm. and uh, I will be wary to distort my present equilibrium. Mm. Could you think that, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, you, you're a lawyer, I, I presume. Engineer. You're an engineer, sorry. And uh, the, the Nigerian legal system says that you are, uh, you are not guilty until you're proven guilty. Yeah. The grass cutting, the 500 million Naira grass cutting contract to Roller Vision, your company, do you think that may have tinted your, your image? And perhaps is one thing that you may be thinking may stop you from thinking or has stopped you from public, uh, you've been, the way I manner you have been perceived in public. No, no, no. If on the contrary, it has had enlarged my profile. On the contrary. The corruption yeah. allegation against Oh, you? yes, on the contrary. How has that? Well, this, the thing is in court. But I've pleaded not guilty, and I believe I'm not guilty. And uh, a lot of Nigerians, everywhere I go, they know it was a setup, and it was very clear, and... Uh, you think someone set you up? Oh, I know some people set me up. Who are those behind it? I won't tell you, but I know, and they know that I know. Some of them have confessed. That they set you up? Yes. But morally speaking, I mean, could someone be in power and be able also to influence contract to his company that is, uh, is beneficial to, to, to him or her? I, I don't want to, should I comment on this? It's illegal, but I can tell you. I don't know whether it's legal or not for me to comment. But let me tell you, it was trial by media by you people. Before I got into government on the 31st, I think, on the 31st of uh, August, I had called a friend of mine, a lawyer, a very senior lawyer, to advise me on what to do. And he says, first of all, you should resign from your companies. I was chairman, I was member of board for 16 companies so at that time. I was managing director of one. So that same day, I think, on a Thursday, while well, this will be sworn in on a Monday, I wrote a letter of resignation to all those companies. I instructed my lawyers to disengage me from the Corporate Affairs Commission, documented, written, and, and even the fees paid for. I, we had a board resolution sent to the banks. Uh, 
the listing me as a signatory to the accounts. All these are documented, they are there for anyone to, to see. But uh, you know, in, the, in politics, uh, nobody was interested in all those things. Now, what, this, those happen, what did happen therefore was that the company of which I was a managing director, eventually, unknown to me, got a contract as consultants to supervise a project where it's called, they now call it grass cutting. It was not grass cutting. It was not grass cutting. What is it? The contract was, and, and we had been doing that job for the World Bank in, uh, long before I became SGF. You see, there's this uh, river, rivers around the Lake Chad that feed the Lake Chad. Uh, because of the nature of the environment, there's this type of grass, we call it typha grass. When they grow, they grow up to above uh, human height, and their roots are very strong, and they mesh. They, they live on water. When they grow like this, what they therefore do is they stop the water from flowing, and the water starts to overflow its banks. This has many consequences. Number one consequence, it, it flows the farmlands along the river bank. And that was the, one of the areas where the federal government had invested a lot of money on irrigation for wheat farming. But that, that grass, having overflowed its banks, prohibited farming. Uh, navigation, because of course you can no longer. Uh, so, so the, the amount of for the contract is justified. The, well, the, nobody questions the amount of the contract. What it was not done. The contract for my my former company was 7.2 million naira consultancy for that project. Is the morality around it whether or not your company as an SGF should? I had retired. That? I resigned from the company. When you resign from the company, the company doesn't liquidate. Oh, I think we should leave that for the court That's to it. decide. Yes. But I must sincerely thank you, uh, former SGF, Babachi Lawa. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thank you very I much. <laughs>